going to go see Kirsty, who we met in Fiji, and uh, also figure out how to get around by public transportation here. She's taking the train. We're heading to Southampton. Southampton. We're taking the bus. We're off the bus. Off the bus. Brick everywhere. Everything is a brick. And stone. So in olden days, this is where the defenders would get up here with their bows and arrows to fend off the shopping mall zombies. The shopping mall zombies. Yeah. They say in uh, the 1939 and 1945 war, also known as the Second World War, they mounted like an anti-aircraft gun up here. Which is kind of interesting fact of it. No one really knows, but the best guess is because it's got a fireplace. And they, that's added to the 1500s, so it's a late tradition. Um, this was, think of it as a medieval travel lodge. In other words, the pilgrims came from Spain all the way through France. This dates from probably the 1300s, you can tell that by the style of the building. It's got these interconnecting arches at the top. St. Michael Church was founded in 1070 and is the oldest building still in use in the city of Southampton. The church remained intact after the bombings during World War II, and the myth is that German bombers were told to avoid bombing this prominent building because pilots were able to use the church spire as a landmark among the rubble to help them navigate. Well, churches in general, I think, are apparently it's supposed to be built east-west. But there's like a couple, there's one that is in north, north south. Because they didn't give them the space. Catholics are like illegal here. Ooh. Or they were. So that's where the Titanic would have sailed from, actually not in that berth, one berth over. But that ship is there. 18, 19 I think at the time. And Shakespeare was brought in for a while to be a tutor. So Shakespeare may have walked up the up these steps. I can't prove that, but again it's one of those urban myths. Possibly true. I want to walk where Shakespeare has been. By any other name. Oh. Janine by any other name. Oh. The D Day Wall, 1944 5. What's significant about this wall is what's on it. Because on here, you'll find all the way along carvings of initials of American soldiers that stood here waiting to get on small craft down here and then go storm the beaches of northern France where of course if you've ever seen the film Saving Private Ryan the opening sequence of that is incredible because it actually shows 
exactly what it's like to be under fire and the chaos that goes on and everything else. So you see here all the initials. So very often they put their stake. You see Ken, a mass for Massachusetts. They put their state name, PA somewhere for Pennsylvania and so on. But I find this emotional because, you know, if you were a 19, 20 year old stood here, you'd come all the way from your, might be quite a quiet place in America. You're told you're going to go across there and you've no idea whether you're going to live or die. Same for the Germans on the other side, of course. They didn't know. And that's the brutality of war, isn't it? This boat has no place to haul up a Burgi or a courtesy flag. So now, Janine. Up above. So, I've just attached this block here so we can hoist flags. One down, working on number two. One of the things I'd like to do is set up a kind of a lifting harness for the Takakat dinghy so that uh, we can lift it out of the water at night and also for shorter kind of mid mid range passages we can uh, lift it out of the water also onto the bow. So I think we'll hook up to these D rings there and those ones will create like a little triangle on each side. <laughs> that we can clip off a halyard too. I'm going to spread open in between the strands. This is a 12 strand rope, like that. Take my running end, the short end, and pass it through, like that. I'm gonna pass the standing end through the running end, through the short side. There's another way to do that if, if you don't have access to the full other end. So there it's locked. Scrunch it up. And pass your fid through it, kind of working your way inside this 12 strand line. You're going to want to speed this up because it's, it's a little tight. There we go. And now my running end came out with the fid. Now I have to taper it for. So basically, every second turn. I'm going to pull out a strand and then uh, cut it. I'm going to start cutting them so I don't get it mixed up with the standing end because you're as you pull them out you get less structure. I have one full length one. So then I'll just milk it back. There you have it. So now we can connect that to the boat. Splicing. Mm -hmm. Ding! So this is how we store the dinghy when we're underway. And uh, you can see the harness that Kevin created. So here's the ring and those are the splices he did. Come up and connect 
these D-rings here. So right now we're using it to strap the dinghy down so it doesn't move. But to lift it, we untie this red line. And then there's two, so the other half of the harness is on the other side, would come together here in a ring. And we would hook our halyard onto it that goes to the top of the mast and then swing the boat over to the side and lower. Good morning. Today's projects are laundry and we're going to hoist the mainsail because uh, we have some reefing lines that got installed but we just have to shift the lines around a little bit. And the wind is down right now, so we're gonna get at it. in line with where yeah yeah that's uh, further back a little further back a little further back and then we'll tie that okay. differently there yeah and then this guy uh, right there so we'll slide that forward as well yeah right that should be plenty finding it challenging to raise and lower the main and we tried a reef the other day and it was uh, interesting to say the least and it looks like here are reefing lines this is our third reef this is our second reefing line um, they're crossing over so we're gonna rerun this and maybe it'll go a bit smoother after that Boat project in the head or bathroom. Luckily, we're not having anything wrong with um, called it outflow wastewater, which goes out that way. We're having problems with the intake, so salt water is supposed to come in here, and that's how we um, flush with this manual toilet. So there's the pump the handle. But what's happening is when you're flushing and the salt water is coming in, it's leaking all over the place here so I'm going to remove this bit and we're gonna have a look at it. You might splash water all over the place here. No, nope, no, nope, success. So really this should have a hose clamp on it. Okay and then huh yeah so, if you can see, this gasket is supposed to be uniform, but uh, it got pinched when it was installed. And this is why water's leaking out. So the nearest store with a spare part like this is too far for us to get to. So I'm going to try and put some silicone grease on this, fit it back in and then um, see if that works. Let's 
success. Mm -hmm. Yay! So flipping the switch for raw water to come in, which is salt water. water came in, but this is bone dry. I think we're in business, Kevin. Yep. Okay, job complete. Little hot. <laughs> Brave man over here. I have my shield and my sword. <laughs> I gave Tech got a scrub. She's been in the water for about a week. I don't know if you can see the little red spots of growth that Not wouldn't wouldn't come out. Almost like a coating of ooze, Slime. like slimy gel. It's like jellyfish. Yeah. But we also noticed these brackets which are to attach wheels. Oops. They are already showing signs of rust. So Kevin has. What do you got there? Teflon lubricant stuff. What did they say about this? Steve says, I put that shit on everything. I thought he was talking about Frank's hot sauce. I, I put that shit on everything. Dingy, two duffel bags. How about that? Breakfast time. And also... Today is departure day. And as seems to be becoming more and more typical, it's raining. But that's all right. We're gonna go provision this morning and we're getting out of here. As Kevin aptly put here. Get out of here. Let's get out of here. We've had a delivery. Watermaker. Rain Man. That's probably the uh, membrane from that long one. This one? Pump membrane. Spare filters. Heat filters. Mm-hmm. Keep going. Yeah, we'll have to get into that. At some point, not today. Not today. Because today we're leaving. <laughs> We're off. We just left Campbell River, where the boat's been for the last like two years. Yep. And now, sails are up. We're heading toward the needles. We're doing eight knots over ground. 